Hi there! In this lesson, we will talk about some specific objects, like for example doors, windows, apertures, and so on. Doors, windows, and apertures are objects strictly related to the envelopes of the building. So, for example, if we want to draw a door, we need to insert a wall first. Of course, we need to click on the door button from the object menu, a first click inside the wall in order to insert the object, and a second click to fix the position. Now, by selecting the doors, in the panel on the right we have various properties. We will start from the first fixture, meaning that we can open the beam object library and choose among different models. For example, I want to choose this one. Then I can select a second fixture and also here choose a different model. In this case, I would like to insert a door with a glass panel. Now, as you can see from the 3D view, we will have a door composed by two fixtures. And now I want to add a third level defined by a grating. So I will open again the beam object library and choose maybe this model here. After we insert the door object, we will notice that we have some information shown on the drawing model. The graphic properties of these informations can be modified from this section of the properties toolbox. So for example, we can change the color of the font, of course we can choose among different fonts, and we can change the dimensions and the style. Coming back to the door properties, we can change the dimension of the object, for example we can have a 1 meter width opening, we can also modify manually the object directly from the 2D or 3D view. Then we have the height of the object, and again we can type in directly the value here, or eventually from the drawing table. We can decide to invert the opening of the door. For example, it can be open on the left side or maybe on the right side, but we can also choose if the opening is internal or external. And the opening direction can be also changed with the F7 and F8 function key. But let's delete the grating and the second fixture of the door, because I want to show you the reveals function. So click this button and check the sub menu. From this window, we can deeply edit the shapes of our reveal. For example, I can modify this value here in order to obtain this geometry. But now, with these new shapes, I will probably need to change the position of the door fixture. Then we can add a door seal. And by clicking this button of the window, I can make visible the texture. Coming back to the reveal, I can click this button in order to have the reveal also in the upper part of the door. A further customization of the door it's possible by using the casing. So by clicking this button, it becomes available a list of position for the casing. And for this example, I want to add a casing for both sides. And then with this function, I can open the doors of a certain angle. For the casing, it's also possible to change the geometry by typing different value from here. Then I can add a frame from profile and change its properties from this box. For example, I can add a 10 cm offset. And the same function is available from this box that allows me to change the side profile of the seal. Here we have again the height reference system from which I can change the elevation of this door, for example, of 50 cm. Here we have the material section with all the parts of the door, the layers and the aspect that we already covered on the previous lesson, the IFC properties, and at the very end, the attachment. But now, let's move on and analyze the windows object. Let's delete the door and click Alt F2 to rearrange the windows. For the Windows Entity, it's basically the same procedure. So from the Object menu, we will select the Windows object, then click a first time on the wall in order to insert the object, and a second click to fix the position. So let's analyze the properties, starting from the Characteristics section. So for example, the first fixture can be a classic window, while the second could be in aluminium, but also a shutter or a roller shutter like this one. And again, we can choose a different model of grating. The next section define the properties of the font. Now in the geometry section, we can see there are some more functions available. So for example, we can add a 1 meter window of base wall height. 
and by doing so from the 3D view we can notice that the window's elevation is higher than before. And now also a new function will become available which allow us to change the shape of the wall in the section just under the window. So for example we can move the side of the wall of a 10 cm offset. All the other properties are exactly the same of the door's object, so we can change the opening direction from left to right and from internal to external. We can add a seal, reveal and casing, also internal or external as seen before, and of course we can change the opening angle for all the fixtures of the window, for example 45 and 40 degree for the first fixtures, and totally different angles for the second fixture as well. And this is the result in the 3D view. As seen previously, we can also change the position of the fixtures, for example from external to internal, but also in the central position. But now let's delete this window and check the opening properties. As usually we open the object menu and this time select the opening object. We can insert this object directly from the 3D view, so first click to insert the opening into the wall and the second click to fix the position. Now from the properties panel we can change the grading model, the font, but here in the geometry section we will have a new function. From this list we can choose among different shapes of the opening, for example a circle one or a shape made from an arc and a rectangle. We can have a trapezoidal shape or even a free shape that we can modify from the 3D view. We just need to grab the vertex and change their position. And of course we can add new vertex. Now let's come back to the original shape and check this other function. By clicking here the opening will become a recess and it will be possible to change the thickness and the alignment. Let's see now how to deal with the dormer opening object, but of course, before we need to define a roof. As we already learned through the previous lesson, we can quickly insert a one slope roof just by defining the perimeter and eventually the inclination angle. Now access the 3D view and from the object menu select the dormer opening. By clicking on the workspace, we will access the dormer editor. Selected the object from the architectural menu we simply click on the roof entity to set its position. A first click insert the dormer's ridge point and a second click to define its base. Being another parametric object, we can modify its dimension. For example, I want this base 2 meters large, while the ridge should be 5 meters long. We can also modify the height of the ridge point from the 3D view by moving vertically the blue dot, or just by typing a value, for example 2 meters and a half. From the properties menu we can change again the dormer model, for example this time we can select this one, then we can define the slab and wall material layer, show or hide the specific elements, and from the geometry box we can eventually add a frontal offset or a lateral offset to the roof. Then with this function we can align our object to the pitching line. And then here at the end we will have the material composition. Now let's see our object in the 3D view. Our next step is to insert a room object, but in order to do so we need before to insert some vertical envelopes. So let's make a closed perimeter with walls, also a curved wall for this example, and we can close the perimeter even with some curtain wall, straight or curved, and finally we can add our room object. So let's select it from the menu, and then we just need to click inside the perimeter. As you can see here we have the definition of the room, but also the area measurements. But eventually we can divide this room in different spaces by using the dummy envelope. This function allows us to separate different space of the room without adding any real barriers like walls or curtain walls. So now we can click even on this side and define a new room we can change the name of these rooms from the properties panel here and for example we can name it kitchen but we can also define the name directly by clicking here on the table. We can assign this room to a zone and then from this box here we can check some properties of this room for example the area, the volume and the perimeter then again we can modify the elevation of this object we can assign a material to the floor 
and then we have the other box that we already know from the previous lessons. Now that we have defined the room, let's introduce a new set of objects. So open the menu here and choose the ornamental wall. This object is exactly the same of the wall, except from one property. The ornamental wall will not divide the room in different spaces. And this rules is also applied to the curved ornamental wall and to the balcony slab. As said before, all the other properties are exactly the same of the vertical and horizontal envelope. Now let's see another useful object. From the object menu select the stairs function and then click on the workspace. Now we will have access to the stairs editor. As you can see there is a new object menu which provides specific stairs related entities such as the ramp, the curved ramp, the landing, the window stairs and the spiral ramp. As you can see we have everything that we need to model our staircase. Let's start off with the spiral ramp. Of course from here we can define the width which is the distance between the external and the internal circumference, for example one and a half meter. Then we have the number of risers, in this case of 15. Then the software will automatically define the other two geometrical parameters. Then we can define the direction, so for example clockwise or counterclockwise, and the number of threads for each turn. Now by clicking the finish button, we can come back to the normal workspace and selecting again this object, we can see its properties from the right panel. Now if we want to change the stage model, we just need to come back in the editor. So for example, let's delete this object and select another stage model. A first mouse click sets the stars object into the workspace, then we can modify its position just by moving the mouse around. And with a second click we can lock this object in position. Also for this object we can modify the width the number of razors and the thread length, for example 40 cm. Let's draw the landing now. So open the menu and select the landing object. Now first click to insert the object in the workspace and the second click to fix the position. You will notice that when I join the landing to the ramp, the software will also recognize the correct elevation. So let's insert a width of 3 m and 20 cm and a length of 1 m and a half. Then we will draw another ramp, use the F5 and F6 keys and change the alignment of the object and we can also use the F7 and F8 keys to rotate the ramp. Again, as I join the ramp to the landing, the software we will define the correct elevation. Now if there are no objects selected, we can see here the same properties panel as before, so we can edit the property stairs also from here. But let's come back to the 3D view to make some changes. We can change the thread material thickness, but also we can change the front overlay, for example 4 cm, and eventually add a lateral offset of 4 cm as well. We can change the same properties also for the riser materials. Then we have the landing and the ramp thickness. For example, 200 mm for both of them. We can also modify the relative elevation of the first and the last steps by vertically moving this green arrow. But of course, the riser dimension will be modified accordingly. We can also modify this elevation from the properties panel. So for example, in this case, the last step will be 10 cm lower than the upper level, while the first step will be 20 cm higher. Now let's come back to the editor in order to insert new objects. For example now, I want to try to insert a window. So let's select the object from the menu, click on the workspace and click again when we reach the correct position. Of course in this case we also need to change the direction and the dimension as well. So the window should be 1 meter and a half. So let's add the second window, change again the width, move it in the correct position and rotate it of 90 degrees. And this is our object finished. But let's see the other options we have. So delete these two elements and insert again a landing. This time I want a square landing, so I will change the width and the length both in one meter and a half. And let's try the arc ramp. Also for this object we can change the width, so we will have a one meter and a half as well. 
again the number and the height of the riser. Also for this ramp we can change the internal radius, so for example we can have half meters and the angle we need to cover with the ramp. 